bakery and liquor, so they, they pushed yeah. it back. Yeah. They didn't want any discrepancies between be our meeting. agenda and what was posted in the paper. Call to order the regular common council meeting, <coughs> Monday, June 3rd, 7.02 p.m. Roll call. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Next item is Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Confirmation of appropriate meeting notice. Meeting was noticed on Friday, May 31st. Agendas were posted at the post office, library, and city hall. Thank you. Uh, next item is the uh, acceptance of the agenda. I'd like to move up 7B to follow this item here between 4 and 5. I'll make a motion to accept the agenda with noted changes by the mayor. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, next item is to uh, recognize retiring public works director Tom Hartzell. <coughs> I recognize him. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> oh, there it is over there. Wow. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we got the cruise. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Hang that over your bed, Tom. <laughs> that's cool. Be careful. Be careful. Any more of the racks to fall out of the end over there. <laughs> oh, how neat. Oh, a nice shadow box. Uh, and then, don't let me get close to it because. <laughs> <laughs> you catch it, Jim. <laughs> City of Edmonton Declaration. Recognizing and honoring Public Works Director Tom Hartzell for the 36 years of public service with the City of Edgerton. Whereas Public Works Director Tom Public Works Director Tom Hartzell started his journey as a public works operator with the City of Edgerton on May 6, 1983, and was promoted to Director of Public Works in March 2002. And whereas during his tenure on the Public Works crew, he plowed approximately 1,512 inches of snow. <laughs> <laughs> it was just three years. <laughs> like the of garbage, mowing numerous acres of grass, filled thousands of potholes. He's <laughs> leaving work for the guy behind him. He's <laughs> <laughs> not only tried, but 69, 120 pounds of limestone to lime. The ba baseball diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas during his tenure in the city of Edgerton, he has worked under five public works directors, seven mayors, and 61 alder persons. Wow. Oh. That's a lot of bosses. <laughs> Form of bees. <laughs> yeah. Whereas as public works director, he has hired seven full time public works operators, 19 seasonal public works operators overseen 19 road reconstructions and saw the addition of 22 new roads in the city of Edgerton. <laughs> <laughs> and whereas, while well, an employee of the city public works, well, employee of the city public works director, <clears throat> Hartzell worked alongside his parents, Ed and Marge, started his family when he became a father to his son, Brandon, and whereas the city of Edgerton will move forward after public works director Hartzell retires, but will miss his fearless attitude, quick wit, and bake to it. <laughs> <laughs> I never got into the <laughs> I showed up too late. <laughs> now, therefore, we resolve the City of Edgerton Town Council on behalf of the entire City of Edgerton hereby wishes Tom Hartzell happiness on the enemy and that he stops living at the Public Works Garage and starts going to Brigley Field for <laughs> <Go> Cubs. <laughs>
Congratulations, Tom. Thanks for all of your many years. Thank you very much, Tom, for all of your work, all of your hard work. <laughs> it's all the stress. When that goes away, you'll feel a lot better. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Should we move on now? It's okay to move on, Tom. You want, want us to get away from this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the uh, public hearing. The city will hold a public hearing to hear comments regarding sidewalk special assessments for the Sweeney Road reconstruction project. Background. Certainly. Um, page 11 of your packet is um, a brief staff report regarding the special assessment public hearing. Uh, Sweeney Road will be reconstructed south of St. Joseph's Circle this summer. Um, according to city policy, missing sidewalks are to be installed with all new street reconstruction projects. Um, there is a portion of Sweeney Road that does not have sidewalk. Um, the city is holding this public hearing this evening regarding the charging of special assessments for the benefiting property owners for the projects. Um, assessments will pay for the installation of the sidewalk um, where these improvements do not exist. There, there's a list of six landowners that are affected by this. Um, you may recall that um, in recent years, uh, we have done this on several streets in the city where sidewalks have been installed in those places where sidewalk is missing. So it is uh, common practice. Um, this evening, in the passing of a resolution, you would need to also determine an interest rate, the minimum assessment amount to be financed, and the number of years. The most recent project that is similar to this that had sidewalk to be installed where there was no sidewalk before, that project also had curb. Um, the city uh, charged 3.5% interest and provided a 10-year term with $200 being the minimum payment. Thank you. Okay, we'll officially open the public hearing. If there's anyone that wishes to speak on this, we'd like you to go up to the podium and state your name and address so we can make sure it gets recorded. I actually have a question. Okay. Um, what is the purpose of the reconstruction? Of the street? Yeah. I mean, I just drove up, but there's not huge holes in it like other streets in town. And it's a combination of sewer, water, and street condition. And Tom did some resurfacing just to get us through the winter last year, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it is, it's been on the list, and it is a sewer and water project that is on very high on the utilities list for problems in that area. Oh, okay. I'm surprised because it's a relatively new neighborhood. I mean, it seems to be. look like. Part of it is, part of it isn't. So we, what Randy has things televised. I assume this was televised. And Thank you. Anyone that wishes to speak? Just for clarification, there are two spans of Sweeney Street, and it's only the one uh, between Chamberlain and St. Joseph's, or is it correct. all? Okay. Just a piece south of St. Joseph's, correct. Talk to you into it, huh? <laughs> I'm Karen Jackson, and I live at 809 Sweeney Road. Just a couple of questions. Um, our portion of our sidewalk bill is going to be close to $4,000. So what I'm, what I'm asking about and what I'm questioning about is um, the payment. Um, does it go on to the assessment? I was trying to follow. Yeah. Mona, and um, also another concern I have is I know that there's going to be trees that are going to be placed in between the sidewalks and the street. Very concerned about what the quality, how those trees are going to affect the sidewalks. Um, is there gonna be, could there be down the road um, from the roots, from the trees, could it cause eating, could it cause, you know, unevenness. Also another concern from living on the street and when the plows come through, the snow that is generated from the plows, you have to like, but, and not complaining about this part, of course, because it's snow. But just wondering how the trees are going to be able to withstand all the, um, the pressure of the snow from all the mounds of snow. Just kind of concerned about that, <coughs> but mainly concerned too about what the sidewalks. With yeah. the trees. 
And can... then also, too, real quick before I close, um, just want to ask, you know, about the about the payments. Does it go on to your tax? Can it go on to your taxes? Um, somebody had told me that it could be like a seven-year type. I just kind of mm -hmm. want to clarify all that. Yeah, information. great question. The, the council this evening would decide if the special assessments are put in place <coughs> to determine the years that you that you pay for it. And you can anyone can choose to pay it at any time. But yes, the special assessment <coughs> divides it over the number of years. And as indicated. Um, the last assessment project where we had new sidewalks, they gave 10 years to pay, and it is added to your taxes. If you choose to not have it added to your taxes, you can make that payment at any time. So that's how the <coughs> payments work. Does that answer that question? It does, yeah, because okay. we're like right on the corner of Sweeney Road and Chamberlain, so we have like sidewalk here, a portion of a sidewalk there, and then the remainder of our sidewalk is from our driveway, which connects to our neighbor. So, you know, so I'm just kind of curious about that. And then now, we have do we do have shrubs and everything too at the end of our driveway. Um, would that be like the homeowner's responsibility to get to take those out? We've already had our have our we've already have had our invisible <coughs> fence moved, but didn't know if we if it was our responsibility to have like three shrubs at the end or if that's something that would fall into play with the um, you know the construction of the. Do you want to save them? Do you want to save them and move them, put them back in? Well, I, I did take pictures, and I did yeah. go down to Edgerton Floral because they are so beautiful, and I was hoping yeah. we could save them, but I don't know. But I was just kind of wondering, like, the dynamics of all that, too. These are in the right-of-way, I assume? Yeah. Okay, they're in the right-of-way? Yes, they would be in the right-of-way. Okay, so <laughs> our contractor would be removing them, and the question then is if they're salvageable, I don't know what kind of arrangement has ever been made, if any, with a contractor in the past of scooping them and providing them. I don't know if you have experience with that. In the or would it be better to move them before the contractor comes in and temporarily put them somewhere? You can scoop them out and set them in their yard, but usually it's... We would, if they're in the right of way then, and they're in the way of the construction, then they would be removed, just like if a tree were in a wrong location, we would have to remove it to do the project. Mm -hmm. So, but it sounds like if you can move them, you certainly would have the right to do that. And the contractor may be willing to scoop them. Yeah. That, we, we can't commit to that because that's not in the contract, but I assume we could have that I conversation. Yeah. Well, it was just We're, last week you lived on Hain Road. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the regarding the trees, um, there will we do plan to put <coughs> some trees in. Uh, now this street will be of consistent width where now it's of two widths. Mm -hmm. So the terraces will be of the wider version that they have. So that will make the trees um, much less apt to hurt sidewalks. We would never tell you that a tree can never damage a sidewalk because that would be untrue. Right. The wider the terrace, the more the better chance there is of not damaging things. We will be approaching residents who we think have are some places there are overhead lines on that street so the trees that are selected will be trees that are appropriate regarding the the overhead lines and some properties have trees maybe on their own property that don't make street trees really suitable so we've evaluated that and we will be approaching the neighbors yourself included if you're slated for a tree to and have a conversation with you about that to determine if you're in favor of that tree or not so Tr street trees are, in most communities, are everywhere. So the concern about snow damaging street trees, even in terrace widths, which we have some are three feet wide and they have trees in them, they, they survive pretty well. So I don't think that's something that, that we have a great concern about, any street trees being damaged by snow removal. Karen, um, you, know, you know where we live? Yes. So in that subdivision, um, one of, part of the ordinance is to have two maple trees on the, in the oh. terrace. And so we've been there 15 years, and we've never had a problem. Yeah, and they've grown really nicely, never had a problem with the snow, never had a problem with the side, you know, with <coughs> heating the sidewalk or anything. So, I, you know, I'm just speaking yeah, from a no personal perfect. experience. Yeah, no, perfect, because that question was addressed to me, and so I was Good asking, question. I was actually yeah. asking for, you know, other people yeah. that were concerned, too, about yeah. that stuff. So. Good. Thank you. That, w that way it gets recorded, otherwise it doesn't pick it up always in the audience. Hi, I'm Jana Precourt. I live at 811 Sweeney Road. And I don't have a sidewalk right now, but I'm getting one. And where I live is right where the street widens. It's narrower down by Karen's when you turn off Chamberlain. 
and then it widens up. And now it looks on my little map that was included that there's a, a turn in the sidewalk, kind of. I, I'm just kind of curious how much the sidewalk is going to. I've got a tree right in my front of my house, and it's uh, infected with an emerald ash borer. I'm going to have it removed. And I got a hold of the guy. I thought I'd try to get it done before. When is this project going to start? That's one thing I was kind of wondering. We haven't had the pre-con yet, but we think probably June or July this summer. So we haven't. Hit, we don't know exactly. The I'm going to try to get that tree out of there before they do the sidewalk. So then there won't be, you know, that'll be out of the because it's got a lot of roots and it might. It's a well, it's dying too. It's half. It's, but anyway, I was kind of curious about the why is the street getting narrower? Is that just? We're, we're making it a consistent width. So um, the, the narrower section is what the whole street will be. So the reasons we, we, reason we build narrower streets now than we built in the 60s for, are for various reasons. Some of it is safety. Um, we, I think in the 60s, most people believed wider streets were safer streets, and now we've in fact concluded that that's not the case. So wider terraces provide better place for trees. It's significantly less stormwater runoff, more snow storage. So there's lots of reasons why neighborhoods and most cities are now narrowing and narrowing their street widths to try to make those neighborhoods more comfortable. Okay. So I, I don't really, and the other thing <coughs> I have is right in front of my house, the, my driveway, I always have a puddle there. And I'm hoping that somebody knows about that big <laughs> puddle <laughs> because my mailman has to come across there and it's no matter how much, it, you know where I mean? I know. Yeah. Because <laughs> when they black, you kind of bring the, you know, make it flat that way, but I always have a puddle there. Always, all gone. Gone, okay. That's my All right. Thank you. Thank you. But then so was he, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is, is there anyone else? Is it too late for somebody to hire their own contractor to do this project? Their own sidewalk? Yes. Um, we, I don't remember the deadline. Yeah. Uh, we could certainly speak with someone about that if that's a, a big deal. Nobody asked. I was just... Okay. Uh, um, I think we're past the deadline for, by which someone would have had to, to notify us. I think it was today. I thought oh, was okay. Is it? I think so. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Well, June 7th. Oh, okay. That's the deadline? Friday. So there's your answer. If you decide to install the sidewalk with your own contractor, please complete the attached form and mail it to the address below by June 7th so we know not to include your sidewalk in the project. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. But if they're going to, if they're just going to put it on and will I get a bill or how do I know if it's going to go on my taxes or how? I, I don't want to get charged like three and a half percent, but I'll just pay for it. That's a great question too. We send you an invoice at the in uh, September okay. when the project is done saying, giving you the options. If it goes on your taxes, you don't need to do anything and automatically tenth of it or whatever they decide will go on your taxes. If you wish to pay that so you don't incur any interest charges, you will have an invoice to pay on. And do we get to pick a pay again? You will have input into that. <laughs> we can <could, we laughs> allow for that. I mean, there are some limitations because we, we have overhead lines and we have certain trees we don't allow as street trees, but we will do our best to give you a, a yeah, so to choose. So that's what we're installed on uh, West Fulton. My mother used to live out there. And yeah. And they were real pretty, but the, the different, different ones along the street. But the, I drove a mail jeep for a long time, and I pulled in there. And when that was in bloom, I could, and West Fulton was busy. That kind of blocked my view. So I never, I wasn't too crazy about those trees there, but that's there, and we sold the house. So. <laughs> 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 I'm here because I'm losing my trees. So <laughs> I'm hoping I get one. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we will officially close the public. Oh, I'd just okay. like to mention something. Um, I was your neighbors 20 years ago. I lived at 920 Sweeney Road. And um, that was, a, I loved living in an area. And it was nice and quiet. It was a quiet road. There's not any traffic. There's hardly any foot traffic on the sidewalks. And I just drove by there an hour ago. And I didn't pass one single car. And I didn't pass one single person walking on a sidewalk. There's a sidewalk up and down one whole side of the road, and I don't feel that there's a need to put a sidewalk on both sides. Thank you. Along that same line. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Along that same line, could the city state why the, the need is for the sidewalks on both sides, other than just because that's standard? <laughs> Um, you know, it is. Maybe uh, that's why you don't get them. 
I think the reason for the adopted policy of providing s sidewalks is that most communities now are making a significant effort to provide for complete streets so that people who choose to walk, people who choose to walk to church in this area or the students to school, that people have an alternative than getting in their car. Because it's been determined that a lot of people really <coughs> enjoy having communities that provide that level of service because they like to have an alternative to walk. Obviously it's your choice as a community and that's a choice this community has made. We haven't, we aren't proactively infilling sidewalks where they're missing, <clears throat> but when the street is reconstructed, that is by far the most logical time to complete the street. So, you know, it is, it is not certainly required in all communities, but it is a trend in most communities where people believe that it is, uh, it is good to provide an alternative to a car. Great. But half of the, the, they said that the other half of the street has sidewalks? Yeah, the other all they got to do is walk across the street. Yeah. And so I think in our ordinance it says that we need to establish public safety and or public convenience. So to put in the sidewalk? So are we saying that it's just because it's convenient? It's because people like to have wa sidewalks to walk on. So, so it is, it, you know, again, there is no... <coughs> right. Okay. Right. I just wanted to bring that out. It, it said that it's because of public safety that we should decide if it's public safety and or public convenience. And if they have a sidewalk already on one side of the street, I think we've already established that we've already got it covered. Thank you. James Capel on 512 Ridgeway Street. The um, reason you need sidewalks is because you live in the city. And I, w I do a lot of walking. I used to do a lot more before I... And there are places where you can't walk in the city unless you walk in the street. And that's unsafe. And I'd hate to see somebody get hurt or hit by a car because they can't walk on the sidewalk. I have sidewalk in front of my house it stops at my lot line. It doesn't go any farther. And I'm, I live up on Ridgeway Street, which is up towards the school. And the last time we did the reconstruction of the sidewalks, it cost me $3,000 to replace my sidewalk. And when we went through this, <coughs> this last turnaround, I ended up paying another $350 to replace the parts that, uh, that had gotten damaged. And so, uh, you, you, I think this, this street, the, uh, they're making it uh, very uh, affordable for everybody by letting it go for eight or ten years or something like that. And I think it's something that's nice because when I take a walk, I like to be able to walk on the sidewalks and know it's safe. So. Thank you. You also have the uh, benefit of the homeowner's participation in snow removal. and. Uh, there are times when Sweeney does have significant measurable traffic, and that would be on Sunday morning. And Saturday night. And Saturday night, it's a little less. But um, having a sidewalk just uh, removes the possibility of getting really creative while walking. <laughs> well, I continued my drive up Sweeney Road, and I also noticed that on the 1100 block, there's no sidewalks on either side of that street. And so I think in the 8 and 900 block, having a sidewalk on one side is sufficient. So are we doing the road up to the side that has no sidewalks at all? <coughs> Pardon me? Are we doing no. the road up to as far as she said? Not the 1100 block, no. <coughs> Not now. No. Someday. Yeah. It was mentioned before there are two stretches of Sweeney Road and this is only the, the long stretch north of Chamberlain. Okay. We officially close the public hearing. The next item is to consider payment terms and adoption of City of Edgerton Resolution 1519, preliminary resolution declaring the City Council's intentions for the Sweeney Road reconstruction to exercise special assessment police powers under section 66.0703 Wisconsin statutes. I'll make a motion to consider payment to approve uh, Payment terms of 3.5% with a 10-year term. Minimum payments to be uh, financed of $200. 
and approve City of Edgerton Resolution 1519-19. I'll second. Any further discussion? I'm sorry, I missed the um, number of years. 10. Ten. <coughs> Yeah, the motion is for three and a half percent, 10 years, minimum finance to be $200. Any further discussion? So then that will not go under tax bill then. It'll just be absorbed 3.5% for 10 years. Or One tenth of the cost of the sidewalk with an interest charge of 3.5% will be on your taxes every year, unless you pay it off in advance. Mm -hmm. Or you can Correct. pay it off. Anytime right. you like, right? No prepayment penalties. Yeah. <laughs> no prepayment penalties. <laughs> okay. No further discussion here. Oh. I know, I'm sorry. Um, I know that in the letter it stated it's just an estimate. So we will get the money from the city and we'll get it back to you in terms of after the job is done. At this point, we have very good numbers because the sidewalk is a pretty known commodity and we have bid the, the project. So we have very good numbers. So um, the final numbers aren't final until the, right, right. So there, in some instances, sometimes a square has to be removed for purposes of utility construction and then that reduces somebody's cost. That's maybe the most common one in these kinds of projects because we know kind of how much sidewalk there is. Okay, everybody done up here? <laughs> Roll call, please. Davis? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? No. Radke? No. Burdick? No. Braun? Yes. Three to three? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Oh, next item is personal appearances for non-agenda items. Anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on anything that's not on the agenda? Okay. We will move on to the minutes from May 20th. A motion to approve minutes of May 20th council meeting. Second. Any corrections or additions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Finance Committee, Candy. Yes, Finance Committee met this evening. Um, and, excuse me, thought I was prepared. I am prepared, I just wasn't. <laughs> I make a motion to approve bills and payroll in the amount of $163,422.08. Second. Any questions on the bills? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, uh, for approval of licenses, there was a motion to deny of operator license from Megan Luxinger. That's a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I just might add that Megan was um, notified twice uh, to come before count or before finance, and she has not uh, come before council. And has the finance. opportunity to reapply. And has the opportunity to reapply if she chooses. I, I wasn't at finance. What is there particular? So it it was suggested a denial um, from the police department, and then this was her second letter that was sent <coughs> to come speak to that denial and she did not show up in either one. Okay, thanks. And in that recommend in that letter that was sent to her it stated that if she did not show up after this one it would be denied. Automatic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's explained very clearly in the letter. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. 
Uh, there's some, uh, I'll have a motion to, I'd like to make a motion to deny operator's license for Katie Crisp for the same reason of Megan Luxinger. You'll have the same opportunity to reapply? Correct. So it's technically there a second? temporary. Second. <clears throat> okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, there's a motion to approve a operator's license for Lucas Contreras. You're making that a motion or you're asking for one? <laughs> um, I'm wondering, can I make it a motion but still abstain? Um, that's the problem I have. No, no you, you, you aren't. Uh, no. I can't, can't make, make a that a motion. <laughs> Some, someone else. But somebody else can <coughs> who's on finance. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Would somebody else on finance like to make that motion since you approved it? Anybody, anybody can. can. Or anybody can, okay. I'll make a motion to approve the operator license Thank for you. Lucas Contreras. Second, second. Any discussion? Hearing finance, it sounded like there was an issue with... Uh, there were, yes, there's, there is an issue with uh, background check. Um, OWI um, and uh, Lucas was very give a very heartwarming um, reasoning as to what happened and why it happened and how proactive he has been uh, with respect to the incident and uh, is going over and above to help correct the situation. Uh, Lucas, I don't want to put words in your mouth if you'd like to elaborate more. And I am abstaining because I know him personally. So. Okay. Um, if it's an OWI and the job that this is, is deciding if other people can follow the rules, helping other people follow the rules and deciding how much they can drink. If he can't follow the rules, and I'm sorry, you seem like a nice gentleman. I'm terribly sorry. Um, but if you can't follow the rules for yourself, how would you be a good judge to follow the rules for other people and because you're selling them liquor? So I find it hard to authorize a, a, for me to vote yes for this. I would restate, um, as I stated in finance, um, that <coughs> Lucas is considered an asset by his employer and that uh, this isolated case does not affect his ability to uh, fulfill his duties as operator and uh, it, there is no conflict. What company is that? Uh, Ilir Benushi. Can, can what I ask? They do? What is he, that? He works for it, it, the Red Baron downtown. Oh, so. Bartender Red Baron. So you're a bartender without a license? No, he's reapplying he's for a reapplying. license for renewal. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Can I ask when the incident occurred? Uh, March 14th. Of this year? Correct. Should we get it? Yeah. It's in there. <laughs> oh, okay. You wish to see this in? Okay. Do you want to see it? Sorry, it's no, not enough to see it. No, no, <laughs> no, I wanted to get it out for them. That's the background here. <coughs> So was there a letter from his employer? No. no. Okay. okay. Anyone else wishes so to How did we know that he's an asset to the employer then? There wasn't a lot. That's a statement they've been made. Oh, okay. I can personally attest to that fact that he's an asset to that employer because we worked together in the past. So just based on my own experiences in a professional environment, it would be really sad to see him go. So. So you, you work at Red Baron? I, don't I used to work at Lounge 1848, which is one of the three businesses, the three bars that he owns okay. on uh, Main Street. Same company. On Fulton Street. 
I was just going to ask where lounge, that lounge is at, so that's yep. one of them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. Yeah. That that, uh, the tax service is in between there. Okay. Very yep. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All convoys. Oh, okay. Did I read that right? This is your second offense? Um, correct. Uh, well, the first offense happened in Austin when I was 21. And that was nine years ago. Okay. And it was considered a non-conviction dismissal. Okay. Um, according to Massachusetts law. So um, it's been, it shows up as on um, the DOT as a arrest, but it's being tried as a And you have not been convicted of this one yet. We saw. Thank you. Do we have a motion in a second, don't we? Yes. Any further discussion here at the table? Hearing none, roll call. Braun? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Issa? Yes. Davis? Epstein. Olson? Yes. Radke? Mm -hmm. No. Motion passes, four to one. Okay, um, we're on to the licenses and I, have a clarifying question. So in finance, we treated these as a group mm -hmm. for each of these. I have been asked uh, by a council person if we could do these individually at council. So since we did it one way at finance, can we do it a different way at council? You, yeah, that is up to the body. Okay. Now I have a question on top of that then. Do we need to do that for every single section or or like could you maybe specify which ones you want to do individually as well yeah. so say we have a group the first one for example we have the two uh, and nobody has an issue i don't have an issue with the san sandwich boards of the dance hall or the private property thing but i'd like to um do the liquor license and tobacco licenses separately but okay. just the liquor or also beer so that's fine it's only going to take a minute or 30 seconds okay so you're saying what? I guess I didn't. Anything that has to do with alcohol or tobacco. Alcohol, or tobacco. E, C, D, E, and Okay. F. Okay. So I'll <coughs> uh, make a motion to approve a Class B beer license renewal for Mario's Italian Restaurant, LLC. Agent Carla Zimmerman. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve Class B beer license renewal for Vanny Go, Agent Brian Dejigan, Dejian. I'm Dejigan. Right, Thank you. <laughs> Second? Brian and Annie. Any discussion? <laughs> Where's that at? The, the depot. 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 Oh. Okay. They do Any? paint nights. Cool. Any further discussion? Nearing none. Roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve a Class B combination liquor and beer license renewal for Town Country Club, Inc. Michael Hesselman. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Verdict? Uh, yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve Class B combination liquor and beer license renewal for two brothers, Byron Grill, Agent Alir Banushi. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. <laughs> Motion passes. Motion to approve Class B combination liquor and beer license renewal for Cafe on Main, Agent Alir Banushi. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Verdict? Yes. 
Motion passes. Motion to approve Class B combination liquor and beer license renewal for El Patron Mexican Grill agent Alejandro Ramirez. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Ron? Yes. Esau? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve Class B combination liquor and beer license renewal for last night Bar and Grill, Agent Terry Notstead. Second. Did you get a second? Yep. Got a couple. Any, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for TK's Decoy Bar and Grill, Agents Tom and Carol Kulo. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve the same license for the pit stop of Edgerton LLC, Agent James Little. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for the Baron LLC, Agent Alir Benushi. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for Lounge 1848, Agent Alir Panushi. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Can we hold up a second here? Yes. Would anybody be against skipping down to uh, number three so we can <laughs> take care of the public event packet for the uh, tractor pole and I think that makes sense. Let them leave if they don't want to hang out here anymore. Yeah, yeah they were just <laughs> you guys have been here. They a while. were just <laughs> so thankful at how fast it went at finance and now we're <laughs> okay. <getting> downgraded. <laughs> I'd oh. like to make a motion to consider the public event packet and request uh, to waive the fees for the Edison FFA alumni for truck and tractor pole. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, just uh, to clarify, yes. the way that that's presented, will, will that be the motion that she makes? Do we need to make the clarification that we made at finance? With the well, it should be clear whether or not you're having yes. police protection. So we did, dis yeah, we discussed this at finance. So we're with these event packets where there's a, a waiving of fees and, and um, police. Um, possibility of police presence, we want to make sure that we include what was discussed at finance. So you may want to go ahead and add on to that or let Wait, older person also know. Wait, the yeah, it's not, the you could amend so it. Would be how. Is it. It's without the police, per, with, I mean, without last, the last year we went without the addition of the police because we didn't believe that we needed it for yes. that event. Without the overtime, yes. Is that the same thing the same. that was yes. discussed this exactly. year? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'd like that to include that in my motion then that we do not need extra police protection. That we are waiving, or that we do not want police overtime. Right. Okay, is that good with the second? I'll second it, or we can go along with the amendment. As amended. Okay, so everybody's clear it's approving the packet without the police overtime in it at all. And waiving the other and fees. And waiving the other and waiving public works fees and the other fees. Yes. And the chief's recommendation that was to have a beer garden fenced off. Are they doing that? Or so no, that's a it's a good question, Ann. We had um, so we had talked a little bit with Chief and I had suggested at some point in the future at the public safety meeting it would be good to discuss uh, some of his thoughts going forward on any of those recommendations. If I recall last year with the other chief also, every time an event packet came forward, he had recommended a beer garden also. So I would just, as a council person, just like to understand better from a police perspective, police chief, what their um, rationale and recommendation is for um, <coughs> beer gardens. So, so this is not, this did not include a beer garden. Okay. Can I amend the motion to add it or no? So we do fence off the area where the beer is sto stored and sold from that has a smoke <coughs> on it. As well, we also fence off the track 
portion of the event. There are two entry and exit points that all goers must pass through. One is a man pass and the other one is our pit driving area. So there are no hearings allowed. We business, we see people, we have people stationed by that fence. So nobody's bringing anything in or out of the event for the fence we have around it. And we had that discussion this morning. We spoke on the phone and I was comfortable with that. With how they explained that they're going to fence off that area. They control the drinking area and the tractor pull area. So is the drinking area fenced in and so that only people over 21 can get in there? Or is it like an open field where you just walk around? The whole event area is open. So there's not a fenced in place to consume the beverage. That would be within the event area. So then it's not a beer garden that's fenced off then? No, but we are containing the public to the track area. In the past, the whole park has been open. So we try to eliminate the amount of space people can wander through the park. We will watch them as they come and go through our event. So then it doesn't follow what the chief is asking or suggesting to have a fenced in area then? In the past, they haven't had any issues with that. I was going to ask this at every event, not specifically all. Right, and that's where Councilwoman Davis was talking that we can have further discussion during our public safety meetings about how we can move forward with fencing specific areas in. But can't we do it for this one too? Get them all started at the beginning of the year and go through? I have never been to this event in the past. So I'm relying on the lieutenants that I've talked to in reference to this event. Is it safe to assume, Chief, that when you did write your recommendation, it was prior to you talking with the alumni? And then after you spoke with them, or the FFA alumni, after you spoke with them, you felt more comfortable with how they're going to have it set up? So how can you prevent someone under 21? Young people go in, half of them are over 21, half of them are under. So if you can't keep the under 21 separated, how are you going to know if the older ones buy the beer and share it? Because if it's fenced in, you keep them away from each other. Everyone entering the event receives a wristband. If they're old enough. Everyone receives a wristband so we know that they've paid to be in the event space. Then our licensed bartenders will be marking those wristbands to indicate that they are of age, anybody who's in the questionable age range. And we have people, all of our volunteers, FFA alumni members, are circling the event at all times. We have people in every single area of that track. And they take, if somebody's underage drinking, what do you do then? Same thing the other bartender would do, take it away, have to leave, take it away. And then he has to leave? If we have to, yeah. We've never had an issue with, I've been in front of alumni for 15 or 20 years, and never once known an issue with underage drinking out there. The wristbanding is a good practice because it has an additional benefit, and that is the wearer of the wristband is then expected to self-police. And that police protection cannot possibly cover every instance of an adult doing what the wristband would suggest they not do. So the wristbanding is, you'd never want to see that go away. But there's also the variability of whether or not police are going to be in the area when an instance of illegality occurs. So self-policing is the thing we're relying on. And this is very much a family event, too. Yes. I mean, I think most of the attendees are probably families. You probably don't get too many. Yeah, yeah. It's a good point. And it's a community event, so most people know everybody in the audience, in the crowd, whether they should be old enough to consume or not. Any further discussion? 
throw the motion back at us, please. The motion is to approve the public <clears throat> event packet for the Edgerton FFA alumni for the truck and tractor pull, waive the fees, um, exclude uh, the extra police overtime, and with the fencing, I put an acceptable fencing by the police chief. So I don't know if you want to make that part of your motion. Um, I think we should have something in the motion about the fencing because there's been so much discussion. Okay, well, what I will add the that then. Was it in the packet? It was in the police, um, the security portion of the packet. No, but wasn't there, so did, did they determine that they're going to have fencing? Just the well, fencing they've described, not not a beer garden, but the fencing they've described is what is in the <coughs> packet. Right, so by right. passing the packet, we're agreeing with them, which is what we're doing. But it, that wouldn't be the fencing that we would be putting in there. That we're saying not to include the recommendation by chief. Right. Is oh, that not what by you're not, saying? Okay. Yeah. Not to yes. You're saying not to include right. it. Okay, I thought you were yes. saying we were. Pending further no. discussion and uh, illumination with the discussion with the chief. Future. I'm confused now. It sounded like the chief was okay with what <laughs> was presented to him for what. Satisfied with our okay. discussion. <clears throat> There a second? I can't remember. Yeah. There is. It was an Olson verdict motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Olson? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Ron? Yes. Isa? Yes. Davis? Yes. Donkey? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve a uh, temporary Class B license for Edgerton FFA alumni on June 16, 2019. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve public event packet and request to Wave fees for Edgerton Lions Club Independence Day celebration. Um, and, uh, yep. Um, include it, but the um, city will pick up the expense of police overtime for an approximate cost of $625. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. <clears throat> Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yep. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve temporary Class B license for Edgerton's Lions Club on July 3rd. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> Motion to approve change order for Sweeney you Road Project. Back, you want to go back up to the licenses? I'm sorry. <laughs> thank, oh, thank you. Oh, now we can go back. Now Good luck. <laughs> okay. Good luck. <laughs> you thought you were almost done, huh? <laughs> I figured we're on a roll. Why would I? I did why can't it. I just, <laughs> can't I just I finish these done. bottom ones I have, we have got going? I don't care if you want, yeah. to, you want to finish them. I'm on a roll. <laughs> okay. Motion to approve change order for Sweeney Road Project. <coughs> Any discussion? Yeah, question. Change order. Are we talking about the uh, sidewalk assessment then? Or? No, no, it would be Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Page. Oh, the addition on the Chamberlain. Okay. Yeah. Chamber. Yeah. Chamber packet. <coughs> so it's included with that project because sure. there is a little bit of it being done already with it. Logically, it makes sense. Yeah. So just and it needs it because there was a water main break down there last year and the rest of it's in pretty tough shape too. Okay, so thank you. you must have a new road there. Okay, any further discussion? Roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve agreement with Clark Companies for Landscape Service Services. Second. Any discussion? Yes, what is the current um, annual amount that <coughs> um, we're paying them for the uh, landscape and the, the baskets and such? What did we pay them in 18? Is that what you're asking? 
Pardon me? What did we pay them in 2018, I assume you're asking? Because this is a 19 contract that we're approving right. this evening. So it yeah. was $2,500 less, so that would be $1,300. $13,000, 20, excuse me. $2,500 less than 2018? Correct. The budget of 2019 included a $2,500 increase. Oh, increase. Increase for this mm -hmm. year. So what's the total then for 2019? 15000 I believe. 15000 15500 Page 35, finance. Okay. Thank you. Yes. 15 thank you. Yeah, there. There you go. Oh, it's thanks. in our, yeah, it's in the finance one. Oh, it was already budgeted, from my understanding, for the 2500 increase. Sorry. So what we're approving the change is just for the dates that they put the flowers out and take them down. Because the increase was already approved last year at the okay. end of last year when we were doing the budget. Okay. I agree with the date changes. I think that's that's, that's all that this one is about. Last year I think they were left up too long as well as the Christmas baskets were left up a little too long I thought. So that's what this agreement is that we're voting on. And so is there, I noticed, I noticed the change in the summer baskets, but was there a change, or is there dates in the Christmas baskets being in the food? Hey, there's a staff report on page 11 of your packet. Can uh, you give me those date changes? Nope, not this one. <coughs> the winter basket used to be first killing frost. It's now September 15 is what's being proposed by the contractor. The summer baskets. summer yeah. baskets. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering about the winter baskets. No change. What are those dates? Um. The contract <laughs> in your packet says. Okay. David's got it right here. Winter baskets are. March 1st. March 1. Remove. Remove? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to see that happen earlier. My guess is. By March 1st, those evergreens are pretty <coughs> brown. Recall. I'm wondering if that's going to cost us more money. I don't think so. You don't? You don't think that they, okay, so they put them out, put the new baskets out? Just when they remove them. So it's your call is when you want to remove. It's not any less maintenance for them. It's probably a little less maintenance because if they fall from the snow, it's a little less work for them. Okay, I just want to make sure that they're not making an extra trip to take them down. No. And so they charge us more. No, nope. okay. good question. There's a lapse in there between March and okay, good. May when they go up. Okay. So if you want to change that date, I'm sure the contractor wouldn't be opposed to that. I'd like to see that date changed to February 1st. Like I said, they were getting pretty, uh, pretty brown by the time they were taken down this year. And, and a little bit outdated, I felt. Can we do that the way it's written here? With it is a contract. It is a contract, so, yep. Do you want to make that as a motion then? Amendment or? Yeah, just amendment. The contract is as presented, so if you want to change the dates, you have to make a motion and to amend the uh, contract. Okay, do we go ahead with the motion that's already made, or do I make the yeah. amendment now? Because I didn't make the, I didn't make the yep. motion, but. No, nope. you don't, you don't, so, you can. Okay, I'd now. like to make an amendment then to that contract and have the baskets removed by February 1st. The winter. The winter baskets. baskets. Winter, yeah. Second. Should we check with the. Well, if it doesn't if cost, if it, if it doesn't cost anymore, term. if the fee is, got it. They also have language in the contract about maintaining baskets that fail uh, their suspension because of heavy snow. So. Right. so this makes it easier for the contractor, so I can't believe it's going to cost us anything. But if it does, I'll come back with that contract for you. Okay. Thanks. Thank so do I have to be okay with that amendment? Uh, no, we have to vote on the amendment and then we vote on the... I amendment. see. Good. Okay, perfect. Yep. Oh, I forgot how that worked. Yeah. Any more discussion on the winter baskets being removed by February 1st? Roll call. Olson? Yes. Esau? Yes. Davis? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Well, the original motion is to approve the new dates for the summer baskets. Well, the, the entire package, the okay. uh, kind of entire contract with a uh, new uh, winter basket removal date. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Esau? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? 
Yes. Ron? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, motion to approve bid for asbestos assessment at 407 North Main Street in the amount of $3,200, which was a low quote provided by Advanced Health and Safety. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Mm. Motion passes. Motion to approve adoption of shared ride taxi procurement policy addendum regarding appeal, appeals process. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, back up to the top of the page. Motion to approve Class A beer license renewal for Quick Trip Number 675, Agent Sarah Pierce. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve <laughs> same license for stop and go Number 214, Agent Andrew Bowman. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. <clears throat> Motion passes. Motion to approve Class A combination liquor and beer license renewals for Cowley's Family Foods, Inc., Pigley Wiggly, Agent Jason Cowley. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for Game Day Beverage, Inc. Agent Jasbir Carr. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for Firm Ventures, Inc. Edgerton Pharmacy, Agent Janet Grayson's. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I have some uh, questions here. I'm wondering, um, since they're applying for renewal and they haven't used it yet, have they given any, indica any indication of their plans this year with the liquor license, if any? Not to me. I certainly wouldn't have asked. So did you hear anything? No, and that's not a question on the application. Okay. And there's no restriction in our ordinance for them to ever have to use it. Okay. Anyone else? Roll call. Davis? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same permit for Burns Full Service LLC, Agent Casey Burns. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for KNB LLC Hotspot Liquor and Smokes, Agent Basant, Basant Kumar. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? No. Radke? No. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes 4-2. Before we move on to the next one, is Casey's in this? Where do they fit in? Yep. Oh. Casey's was, um, in finance, I explained, Casey's was noticed in the newspaper. We have to notice oh, that one. Okay. 15, yeah, 15 days ahead of time. They were noticed um, under a Class A beer license only. It was a, a staff mistake, so we're going to re-notice it in the paper, and it'll be on the next council agenda. There was no mistake by Casey's. It was a staff error. Thank you. Good catch by a couple of you guys. <laughs> okay, moving on to um, class um, motion for approval of a Class C wine license renewal for Vanny Go, Agent Brian Dujan. Dujan. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, roll call. <clears throat> Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burton? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve cigarette and tobacco license for family dollar stores of Wisconsin. 
Second. Any discussion? Who was that second? From to me, sorry. <laughs> Roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for game day beverage, Inc. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for Cowley's Family Foods, Inc. Piggly Wiggly. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Bradkey? Yes. Burton? <coughs> yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for two brothers bar and grill. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Bradkey? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for quick trip number 675. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, motion to approve same license for stop and go number 214. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Motion to approve same license for Burns Full Service LLC. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Um, no uh, K and B LLC on the. They um, haven't. They haven't approved come forward. their license previously. They have not opened, so their license will be for the new license term. Yeah. So, because the license, there's no limit on them. So their license, they ask to be effective when July they open. Okay. okay. Thank you. Did we cover? So that? since that's pre-approved. Before we, that's not, that's why it's not in here tonight? Correct. But why um, were they under the liquor area then? Because their liquor license was controversial and they actually paid for their license from the day you issued it to June 30th because we had to amend the, um, the ordinance and there was a restricted number. They didn't want to lose that. So they paid for that. They asked for it to be issued when, when it was approved. Oh. So if there's no limit on cigarette, we can issue 100 cigarette licenses if we wish. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Now, did we cover Casey? No, okay. not yet. I think I jumped in a little soon on that. You're the mayor. You can do what you want. <laughs> okay? <laughs> that's all right. Within reason. <laughs> okay. That's why we have Chief Kowalski here, though. <laughs> Casey, get out of hand. Motion to approve same license for Casey's General Store. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, motion to approve dance hall permits okay. to we the can Baron. Do it as a group if you want. I'm planning to write, but thank you. Thank you. The Baron LLC, Two Brothers Bar and Grill, Lounge 1848, TK's Decoy. Decoy Bar and Grill, Edgerton Town Country Club, Inc., and Last Night Bar and Grill. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve sandwich board permits to the Baron LLC, Two Brothers Bar and Grill, Lounge 1848, Game Day Beverage, Inc. Eman, help me. Emaeus? Emaeus. Huh? Emaeus. Emmaus, thank you. I don't know why I have a problem with that name. Community Church, Perfect Corner, Ripples Resale, Hemp, 1848. Second. Any discussion? Just 
One, one thing, when we, when we send these guys or whatever you send out, can you make a note to, again, reinforce the policies of where they can place them and how they can place them? Yeah. Because some uh, of them are... I think it's outlined on the, um, the application. It is. Send it, we'll send <laughs> but I've seen, I've seen a lot just right in the middle of the sidewalk <coughs> or way over where cars park and their car doors hit them and they just, just so they can place them. And I have a question on how um, new businesses are alerted to the possibility of the need to, to obtain a license. Generally a new business would come in for a sign permit anyway to sign their business. Okay. Um, and I believe they're informed at that time. Okay. It's just that the, the bookstore, I don't think they have a, a sandwich board out anymore. But when they did, it wasn't with a permit. So it, I don't know if they were ever I thought a permit. they did. You could okay. be right. I, I thought they had gotten one, but I could be mistaken. Yeah. It's certainly not a foolproof method. We would just yeah. take anyone's assistance who can point those out to us. So <clears throat> we try our best to catch all of them. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Brock? <coughs> yes. Ocean passes. Motion to approve private property and public sidewalk permit to Burns Full Service LLC and Ripples Resale. Second. Any discussion? I just have a question. What does Burns put on the sidewalk? Long All the lawnmowers that are out in the yard there, that's the right of way. <laughs> But they're not actually on the sidewalk. Well, it's, our, it's our right of way. Yeah, so it's the and the public right of way. Okay. This is the name of the license, but it ex extends to the public right of way. So if they're off their property on someone else's, they need it a would, permit. It's like on the, the, what we call the terrace, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Isa? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Gee, I'd like to keep going, but I think that's that <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hand it off. <laughs> no, I'm not a dream board. <laughs> I think you've had the floor long enough. I all <laughs> I'm done. Anything for the tree board? <laughs> Uh, the tree board is working on their ceremony because the city of Edgerton has now been designated a tree city. Oh, hey. wonderful. Oh, yay. Very exciting. Awesome. So there will be a ceremony on the Saturday of Tobacco Heritage Days here in the Pottery Garden. Oh, very so good. Cool. Nation coming about that. Very good. Hoping the weeds are gone by then. <laughs> <laughs> I sprayed them Sunday, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Um, fire district. <laughs> oh, me again. <laughs> I will defer to our wonderful fire chief, Randy Pickering, for an update. I'll try to keep it much shorter. Please do. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, it, it was a very busy month. Uh, it's unusual. The average for May is about 15 people per fire department. Um, and
picking up. Um, we're actually uh, out on the interstate for uh, three events uh, over the weekend. Uh, two of them relatively significant that had portions of the interstate shut down for quite a while. Um, so, you know, well, we've got a very good working relationship with the State Patrol, and uh, we work really closely with them along with their mutual aid partners, which in a lot of cases is Edgerton and PD uh, because of their availability. A lot of times the State Patrol officers are all by themselves, and so Edgerton PD is a very uh, helpful partner when we get out there and we're to try to deal with stuff early on. Um, but it's certainly starting to pick up, and we've noticed that. That's big stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, uh, I, I do not want to relive Mayor. Appreciation to the department for their efforts from on behalf of city council. Yeah, I think that would so. because we're thinking of them now too. I mean, after the fact, we forget after the fact what those individuals deal with when it's done. We had a critical stress debriefing. Uh, we brought the, the critical. We actually brought the critical stress team in that afternoon. Um, I brought them in initially just to meet with the the other kids from the scouting group. Um, we've done a, a, a critical stress debriefing for our team. We've got a couple of members who are actually continuing in counseling, um, which is the right thing to do that. That's support. nice to know that that's available. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And on a happier note, you hosted um, the blood drive, too. Yes. Uh, actually, two, two of them. <laughs> oh, no, that's very good. <laughs> There's a funny story behind that. Uh, apparently there was a little bit of a scheduling conflict on the second one, and all of a sudden they called us and said, hey, can you want to spend a blood drive tomorrow? <laughs> yes, and that, that's a very popular and very and something we really do uh, enjoy the community, and it's got a good pop. Thank you. Let's move on to consider the request from Alliant Energy for easement at substation located on South Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Any discussion? So how is this different than what we approved before? Um, I don't believe the city council has acted on any easements. Oh, okay. On this. So the, the um, other committees have worked through the site plan approval process, um, but uh, uh, the easement has to be approved by the council. Okay. Wait, where was that? At? Is that this? Anyone else? Is that this here? Mm -hmm. okay. Roll call. Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Issa? Yes. Motion passes. Next item is to consider lifting hiring freeze for Department of Public Works <coughs> Operator. I'd like to make a motion to lift the hiring freeze for the Department of Public Works Operator. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Olson? Yes. Isa? Yes. Davis? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Motion passes. Speaking of public works, um, thank you card here from Dan Reed. Thank you for the camping supplies. They will be used often. I appreciate your thoughtfulness. And then, I remember uh, some of us kicked in towards this Eagle Scout Court of, Court of <coughs> Honor. We got a thank you here from Brandon Adderhold, who was one of the Eagle Scouts that was uh, recognized that night. And thank you for the Eagle Scout donation toward my Court of Honor. Sincerely, Brandon Adderhold. And um, tractor pole coming up Father's Day, so you want to see what they do out there and support the FFA? That'd be a good thing to do that day. The weather's decent. That's all I have. 
Anybody want to get out of here? Or? I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, time you jumped in with a motion over there. <laughs> <laughs>